وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما from the targets and goals that we have during the month of Ramadan amongst them is to achieve a sense of abstinence from the dunya ترك الاشتغال عن الله to leave everything which occupies us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from the higher objectives of fasting. That our hearts and our minds, our bodies, everything becomes directed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talkur ishtigal anillah. To leave anything which distracts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we call in Islam zuhud. This is what we call zuhud in Islam, abstinence and asceticism. <coughs> To leave anything which takes us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ibn, Raj- Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali rahmatullahi ala explains, Az-Zuhud huwa al-i'radu an shay'in l-istiqlalihi wa ahtiqarihi wa artifa'i l-himmati anhu. Zuhud, it is to turn away from something because you believe that something to be of little value. You believe it to be worthless. And you believe that your aspirations are far greater than this particular thing. So you turn away from it. This is what we call zuhud. So zuhud is turning away from anything because you believe it to be, to be of no value. You believe it to be worthless. And so you turn your attentions away from it. This is what we call zuhud in Islam. So zuhud in relation to the dunya is turning away from this world, turning away from any objective in this world which leads us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we understand that it has no value. And we understand that it has no importance. We understand that our aspirations and our souls, they were built for something greater than the dunya and that's the akhirah. Our souls were built for a greater purpose than the dunya. They were built for the akhirah. They were built to experience the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so turning away from the dunya because it has no value with Allah. What is the value of the dunya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the dalil upon what I am saying? That the world has no value with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam has informed us of the value of this dunya in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has said alayhi salatu wa salam, مَا الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إلا كما يجعل أحدكم إصبعه في اليم فلينظر بما بماذا يرجع. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the value of the dunya in comparison to the akhirah with Allah سبحانه وتعالى. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said put your finger inside an ocean and see what remains on your finger after you take it out of the ocean. If you dip your finger into the water and you take it out, what's going to be left on your finger? Very few drops of water only. He says, the Prophet Sallallahu said, this, what remains on your finger from the water, this is the value of the dunya in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Yani, it is of no value with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is of no consideration to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now when we say that the dunya has no value with Allah, what do we mean? Do we mean the time in the dunya, the days and the nights? Is this what is meant by... The dunya having no value with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, not, not the time of the dunya, not the days and the nights of the dunya. It is not this that has no value with Allah. Why? Because the days and the nights, these are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is your zad. This, these are your provisions for the akhirah. Your days and your nights, they are to be used to make your provisions for the akhirah. Hence why Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salatu was salam, <clears throat> it is narrated from him that he would say, إن هذا الليل والنهار خزانتان فانظروا ما تضعون فيهما. سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام would say that the night and the day they are two treasures. Look and see what Allah سبحانه وتعالى has placed inside them for you. What is the treasure Allah has placed inside of the night? He has placed in there rest for the human being. Number one and number two, he has placed his mercy in there for those who would stand up in the middle of the night and perform prayer to him and seek istighfar from him. That's the treasure that awaits for us in the night. And the treasures that wait for us in the day is the, uh, is the rizq which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put out in this dunya for us. We get up in the day and we earn that rizq. This is the treasure Allah has put for us in the day. And so the night has its benefits, the day has its benefits. And so it is not the mere 
time on this world, the days and the nights and the years that we spend on this dunya that is cursed or that is disliked and that has no value with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, but the usage of that time is the attainment of our akhirah. So what then is, uh, is, the, is the aspect of the dunya which has no value with Allah? Is it the earth itself, this planet? Is it the earth itself upon which, upon which we live? The mountains and the trees, is, is it this? It is not even this. Because the, the mountains, the trees, the rivers, everything Allah Ta'ala has placed in the earth, Allah has created all of this for the benefit of the human being. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made all of this as a, as, a, as a blessing for the human being. It is a ni'mah for the human being. So it is not the, the mere earth that has no value with Allah. What is it then from this dunya that we say has no value with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is it from the dunya that we say has no value with Allah? It is those actions that we perform in the dunya which are away from fulfilling our objective of connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any actions we perform which are away from and which take us away from the akhirah. These are the, this is that aspect of the dunya which has no value with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any action which is performed in the world, which has no aspiration of the akhirah in there, this is that aspect of the dunya which has no value with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and explains to us in the Quran about the days and the nights that we spend which are away from the remembrance of Allah, which are away from our, the, uh, the aspiration of the Akhirah. Allah Ta'ala tells us, Know, O people, the life of this world, contrary to what modern uh, uh, you know, thought will tell you, contrary to those who spend their days and nights enjoying the luxuries of the world will tell you, it is not a place of luxury and a place of enjoyment, neither is it a place where we should come and expect all of these things. Allah Ta'ala makes it very clear for, you, for us. Allah Ta'ala says the life of this dunya, it's just, it's futile play. It's futile play. And it is adornment. It is competition between you in children and wealth. It is boasting between people about what they possess. This is what the dunya is. And Allah Ta'ala gives an example. It is like that rain which falls and it causes beautiful crops to grow. They look green and they look fresh and they look, you know, wonderful. But then what happens to those same crops and those plants and those trees which are green and fresh? Uh, they, they wither away and they die. And the wind scatters them in the, in the air. The wind scatters them in the air. Such is the life of the dunya. Such is the life of the dunya. It is green and blossoming one moment and the next moment it is dried, it is withered and the wind scatters it in the air. This is the life of the dunya. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear. After this life of futile play, of competing, in, in wealth and competing in children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you have two options in the akhirah. Either there is the punishment or there is forgiveness and pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَعُ الْغُرُورَ Know that the dunya is simply the enjoyment of de deception that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. This is the reality of the world with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has no value with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Messenger of Allah, so avoiding and staying away, abstaining from the dunya, this is what we call zuhud. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us with regards to zuhud, this is a key for you to attain two things. Number one, the love of Allah. And number two, the love of the people in this world. The Sahaba, they came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, give us an action. Tell us of an action that if we do it, Allah Ta'ala will love us and the people will love us. Tell us of an action that if we do it, Allah will love us and the people will love us. What is that action, Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Izhad, amma fi dunya yuhibbuka Allah. Wazhad, amma fi aydin nas yuhibbuka nas. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Be abstinent from the dunya, Allah Ta'ala will love you. 
and be abstinent, abstinent from that which is in the hands of the people, and the people will love you. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Stay away from the dunya and take your aspirations away from the world. Make your aspirations the akhirah. Allah will love you. And turn your attentions away from that which is in the hands of the people and the people will love you. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. This is great, uh, beautiful, beautiful advice from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abstinence, zuhud in this dunya leads us to these two excellent results. Love of Allah. Allah Ta'ala loves you. And secondly, the people love you. His ibad love you. Subhanallah. <clears throat> and so this is the reality of zuhud. This is the reality of abstinence from this dunya. How does abstaining from this dunya lead you to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How does it lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّقِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْ دَادَيْ يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ that there are those people who they take partners or they take other objects and idols. They love them as they should love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They love these partners and these idols as they should love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is talking specifically to who? The mushrikun of Mecca who loved Allah and Uzza and all of these idols like they should have loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is talking to every single one of us. Who, and, we, uh, and the idols that we have, they are not physical monuments. But rather they are those idols which are in our hearts. Wealth, the love of wealth, the love of property and ownership. Distractions in the dunya, these are the idols which exist in our hearts. Which we love as we should love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala explains, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ the believers, they are not those people who love these idols more than they love Allah. They don't love their wealth and their, only, uh, their property more. Their love is greater for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how zuhud leads you to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You abstain from anything other than Allah. And you get rid of those idols from your heart, which are in place of your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala will love you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. And staying away from that which is in the hands of the people, so the people will love you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Izhad amma fi aydin nas, yuhibbu kan nas. Stay away from that which is in the hands of the people, and the people will love you. What does this mean? What does this mean? <clears throat> the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained this in another hadith. He said, Izzu nafs al mu'min istighna'uhu anil nas. He said, the honor of the believer, it is in independence from the rest of humanity. Independence from the rest of humanity. Meaning what? Meaning that a person strives and earns their own risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever they earn, they are satisfied with. Not that they open their hands and ask when they themselves have the ability to earn for the, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Istighna'uhu anil nas To be independent from the people Rather, rather than asking from the people, you, die, you earn your risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the meaning of zuhud from that which is in the hands of people. That you do not turn your hands towards them to ask them for what is in their hands. But you, are you earn your own risk. And you are satisfied with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you. If you do this, the people will love you. Why? Asking people constantly and being a person who is not independent, who is not able to earn their own risk without a valid reason, without a valid excuse. And you're constantly living off other people. Nobody loves such a person. But a person who is independent, a person who has, who has uh, that, that honor inside themselves that they will earn their own risk, provide for them fa their families themselves, then this has great, uh, such a person has honor in society. Such a person is honored in society, not looked at as a burden on the people. Not looked at as a burden on the people. So this is one aspect of zuhud from, the, from that which is in the hands of the people. Another aspect of, of zuhud from that which is in the hands of the people is not being jealous of that which Allah Ta'ala has granted somebody else and not you. Not being jealous of what Allah Ta'ala has granted somebody else and not you and not competing with them. Not competing with them. The world we live in encourages worldly competition. Encourages worldly competition. There's a new model of iPhone out every couple of months or every, I don't know, maybe once a year. There's a new model of a car out 
know, uh, the, you know, BMW, the 5 Series and 6 Series and, uh, you know, the, the M Sport and the Super Turbo, I don't know <laughs> any of them. All of these new models and every time a new one is released, it encourages competition in the people, in the matters of the dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al Rivalry in dunya has distracted you from Allah. al This seeking of more and more and more, al it has distracted you from Allah. Hatta zurtumul maqabir. Until, O oh people, you visit the, your graves and you will realize the truth. Allahu Akbar. So distraction, rivalry in the dunya has distracted you from Allah until such a time where you visit your graves and you realize the reality of this dunya. Hatta zurtumul maqabir. Until you visit the graves. This is, this, is the, this is what rivalry in the dunya does for us. The whole world is in a scramble for better. Uh, we've got two rooms, we need three. We have three, we need four. We have two cars, we need three. We have three, we need four. Constantly we are in a scramble for better. The human being was built for more than this. Our aspirations of better are not limited to our physical possessions and our dunya. Our scramble for better. I, 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 there are greater aspirations in terms of betterment. And what are those aspirations? Betterment of the heart and the soul. This is the ultimate betterment that we should be seeking. The betterment of the heart and the soul. So our heart is purified when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Allah ta'ala talks about those who their goal is not betterment in the dunya. Their goal is betterment of their heart and their soul. What is their maqam in the akhirah? Allah Ta'ala says such people, those people who prevent themselves from following their desires, and they fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Jannah will be their resting place, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says. So this will be their resting place. Those people whose aspirations of betterment are not restricted to the physical world, but it has everything to do with their heart and their soul. This is the essence of deen. To better our hearts and souls, purifying our hearts and souls. This is the essence of Islam. This is the purpose of our religion. This is why Rasulullah was sent to every single one of us. Rasulullah was only sent to purify our characters. And is the, the, the crisis that we suffer in the world, we see the, the, the difficulties that we see in the dunya today. Is it not only because of the corruption of the hearts of people that we see this crisis globally. Anger gone beyond control. Jealousy gone beyond control. Pride and arrogance gone beyond control. This is what leads to global catastrophe. Why do wars take place? Why is there starvation taking place when there is enough food to feed the planet? It is because of this pride, these, this arrogance, these diseases of our hearts which exist inside of us. And so our betterment should be on our hearts and our souls, not in terms of our physical possession. For that will leave you. Your soul stays with you after you pass away. And you will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either with a purified soul and enjoy His pleasure, or you will stand in front of Allah with an impure soul, filled with pride, filled with arrogance, filled with anger and lust, and all of these diseases that we suffer from internally. And we will experience something other than the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah ta'ala for forgiveness. <clears throat> so this is the meaning of zuhud from that which is in the hands of people. Staying away from that which is in the hands of people. And the people will love you. And direct your attention towards your heart and your soul rather than seeking that which is in the hands of people. So this is what we call zuhud. The key to the love of Allah and the key to the love of the ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam he explained in another hadith, defined zuhud in a very particular way. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Please contribute to the masjid." Jazakumullah <clears> khairan. <throat> the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained, "Laysat as zuhud laysat bi tahrim al halal wa idaat al mal." Somebody might think that Imam Sahib is talking about abstinence from the dunya. What are we supposed to do? Go and live in caves? Are we supposed to, you know, put, put, get, out, get rid of our clothes and start wearing, you know, sacks for clothes and, uh, and go live in caves? Is this what Imam Sahib is telling us to do? No, this is not what Imam Sahib is telling you to do. Let's understand Zuhud from the words of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
What does abstinence from the dunya mean? Does it mean that you leave your homes, you go live in caves? Does it mean that you leave wearing clothes and you, you wear instead, you know, patched and ripped uh, sacks instead of actual clothing? Is this what zuhud means? No. The Prophet ﷺ explained it. ليست الزهادة بتحريم الحلال وإضاعة المال. Abstinence in the dunya, it is not that it is not that you make that which Allah has made halal for you, you make it haram for yourself. This is not zuhud. يعني Allah has made clothing halal for you. Allah has made food halal for you. Allah has made homes halal for you. And zuhud does not mean that that which Allah has made permissible for you, you make it haram upon yourself. This is not zuhud. So what is zuhud? It is an action of the heart. It's an action of the heart. And the Prophet sallallahu explained it. He said, الزَّهَادَ أَلَّا تَكُونَ بِمَا فِي يَدَيْكَ أَوْ مِمَّا فِي يَدِ اللَّهِ The Prophet sallallahu he said, Zuhud is not, abstinence is not, that, that which Allah has made permissible for you, you make it haram upon yourself and say, no, I'm not going to eat food, and I'm not going to have a family, and I'm going to live in a cave. This is not zuhud in, in Islam. The Prophet ﷺ explained what zuhud is. He said, it is that you have more reliance upon that which Allah has. You rely more upon that which Allah has than that which you possess in your own hands, he said ﷺ. This is zuhud, that your reliance upon that which is with Allah is greater than that which is with you. The Prophet ﷺ said, this is the reality of zuhud. The reality of zuhud, yani a person may possess wealth, a person may possess all of these things, but to realize that they have no value with Allah and that they have no, that our reliance should not be on them, that if they are taken away from us, it does not affect our hearts and our souls. Why? Because our i'timad is not upon the dunya and its possession and, the, and its goods. Our i'timad is entirely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first thing. And the second thing, and takuna fi thawab al idha anta asabta biha. The Prophet ﷺ said the second aspect of zuhud is that if Allah Ta'ala tests you, Allah Ta'ala puts you through a trial or a tribulation, a difficulty, zuhud is that you, are the, you have the same level of satisfaction whilst you are in the tribulation as you do when you are out of the tribulation. This is what it means to be abstinent from the dunya. Whatever hal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you in, you are satisfied with that. Why? Because the trial and tribulation, what's it going to do? At most, it's going to maybe cause a loss in your profits, cause a loss in members of your family, cause a loss in aspect of, aspects of the dunya. A person who is reliant on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not fear any of these things. But their reliance upon Allah is more stronger than the, their reliance upon what is in their own hands. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi has taught us. The essence of Ramadan, the purpose of Ramadan. We all have goals for the month of Ramadan. Yani, in Ramadan, I want to read two Qur'ans this year. Or this Ramadan, I'm going to pray all five prayers. This Ramadan, I'm going to you know, pray all my taraweez. This Ramadan, I've got these goals. These are alhamdulillah, fantastic, excellent goals for the month of Ramadan. But the purpose of the greater purpose of the month of Ramadan is not that you are obedient during the month, but it is that you take something from the month and you implement it for the rest of your life. This is the purpose of the month of Ramadan. So think to yourselves, what is my goal this month? What do I want to achieve with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What targets do I have in terms of my heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I want to improve and I want to achieve so that I leave this month being better than what I was previously. And this is the essence of Ramadan. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Fasting has been prescribed upon you only so that you become a person of taqwa. So that you leave the month of Ramadan better than when you entered the month of Ramadan. This is the purpose of Ramadan and zuhud is part of that. It is to leave everything which distracts us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq. Inshallah, we have a small reminder from one of the students of the madrasa. 